the home of the common Joe and the common Sally in the know, even more so than all those media talking heads. This podcast is dedicated to two peas and a fugged up pod. F-U-G-G-E-D. As to not insult those that do not like profanity. That's right. It's dedicated to Linky Boy, who may actually be up for an NFL job. Can you believe someone's actually that stupid? And, of course, we got receipts today for the one they call Con Time, Deion Sanders. And got my Con Time glasses on and my nice little LL Cool JPC hat. That's right. He wants us to play his song. So we're going to play Con Time Deion Sanders' song right now. Let's talk about it. If you see me, then you know it's about a bug. Not about my players, I don't give up. I'm the big dog, should do my little pup. Diamonds on his wrist, and he hold it up. When I holler pee, we that mean I suck. Manipulate my players, then I get them stuck. Take the corner back for a Colorado bucks. Do you believe that? We ran out of luck. I'm 56, acting like I'm 30. Worship me like an idol, cause I'm worthy. Drop bros for a snow hose, wasn't pretty. Overplaying Travis Hunter, did him dirty. Should do a crying daddy, why they hurt me? Setting sack record sight, getting blurry. Players decommitting, coaches start to scurry. Run into the transfer portal in a hurry. Your favorite black coach, I do no wrong. Get them wins up, oh, I won't be here for long. Call them ghetto rappers to get us in a zone. Who ready? I'm ready. Now play my theme song. Woo! Damn. Somebody done laid a smack us down on Dion's candy ass. That was a hell of a rap song. I really, really thoroughly enjoyed it. It conveyed every single one of my feelings about this guy since day one. Hate to pat myself on the back and say I told you so, but I told you so. <laughs> and keep him with tradition and to honor Con Time Dion Center further. It's time for some receipts in the form of Four Horsemen shoutouts. And here they come. Riding in once again, it's the Outlaw Posse. Now, in effect, and today's Four Horsemen shoutouts go to Bebo Lewis, Mad Dog Mike, Joseph McKelvey, and Enough is Enough. Is They are mounted up, saddled up, ready to go, and help us with today's college football invasion. And if you want your badge like them, and to get a random Four, Hor- Four Horsemen shoutout, as well as possibly be the comment of the day, which will come today at the end of the show, all you got to do is join the Outlaw Posse for two ninety nine a month, 75 cents a week. It's just a little join button next to the subscribe button. If you're on an Apple phone, I think you may have to go to your laptop or your computer because it doesn't mesh with YouTube memberships. Now, I can also be found on Twitter at OCF Productions. So if you ever got some ideas or maybe even want to be on the show, just hit me up there in DMs. Now, <laughs> getting right to it here. Seems like oh, uh, two peas in a fogged up pod, as I like to call them now. The uh, douche nozzle brothers, that being Linky Boy and old con time Deion Sanders, have themselves back in the news. Now, I'm going to bring a little something something up here for y'all. We're going to start on a Linky Boy today, as it looks like he may actually be up for a head coaching job somewhere else besides the yes, these skill shooters. But he's not gonna he's not gonna he's not gonna go far now. He's just gonna try to skittle shit somewhere else in the state of California, which we all know is a shit style of a state, except for the city that he may be going to. That being San Diego. I've heard a lot of good things about San Diego. Seems like the San Diego Chargers may be thinking about having Linky Boy as a candidate for this job. As you can see here. Their top seven on CBS Sports for the San Diego Chargers job as they just got blew out 63 to 21. Number seven is Matt Campbell, who's the current head coach at Iowa State. They don't really think that Matt Campbell will leave for San Diego, but they did say that maybe they should approach Matt Campbell because he is a program builder. 
Would Matt Campbell go to San Diego? I think he absolutely would. And as you move on down there, there's your favorite skill shitting coach. One of the P's in a fucked up pod, that being Lincoln Riley, O-T-B-O. That stands for the Bitch Out West, in case y'all don't know if y'all knew this program. It's an acronym that the Oklahoma Sooners um, passionately made for Lincoln Riley. It says here, Lincoln Riley, could the Chargers get Lincoln Riley to finally join the professional ranks? He won't have to move far down the road to coach the Chargers, who already have a franchise quarterback in Justin A. Bear. Warren Riley would certainly covet if he were to jump to the infield ranks. Oh, no, no, he's a quarterback whisperer. <laughs> yeah, right. They give him credit for Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts, and K.K. Williams. Oh, Mary Caleb Williams fingernails. The air raid offense would be intriguing for any franchise, and it fits with how the NFL has developed into a passing league. If any quarterback can concede, uh, can succeed under it, it would be a bear if the Chargers want to think outside the box. And CBS steal all up Lincoln Riley's ass, man. I believe them and Colin Coward uh, must sit around and take notes together or something. Outside the box? That's going to be outside of you getting fired. If you're the general manager and you hire Lincoln Riley, yeah, about two or three years, I definitely think that you'll ask to be fired too. So if I'm the San Diego Chargers, I would not hire him as head coach. And I've said this numerous times. Yes, he's got he's got great offensive schemes and offensive mind, but as far as a CEO and making an entire team gel and come together as one, Lincoln Riley is not 150% not your man. Hire him as your offense coordinator, but do not give him the reins the entire program, organization. Number five is Mike McDonald. He's a defense coordinator. We'll move on and look at these just out of curiosity. Uh, he's defense coordinator to Ravens. Bobby Slowick, um, Texas offense, Texans offensive coordinator. Moving on down, Ben Johnson, Lions offensive coordinator. All these guys are in their late 30s, so they're still pretty young. Eric B. Enemy. He's been up for numerous, numerous jobs at the age of 54 now. He is the commander's offensive coordinator as well. And their number one is Bill Belichick, who is 71 years old. And that's my question with the whole thing is, yes, I know my coach, Nick Saban, is 71 or 72 himself. But it just seems like Saban has taken care of himself better physically and health-wise than Bill Belichick in some aspects. I mean, I'm, I'm just looking from the outside. But would Bill Belichick really start over? I don't think he would. He might. Bill Belichick's got a pretty big ego. But it said something here that was pretty interesting. It said that Belichick is just 83 and 100 in his head, in his head coaching career without Brady as a starter. <laughs> so we see who was actually the – to me, the person that ran that franchise and won all those titles, it was Tom Brady, in my opinion. That's probably going to piss some people off because, you know, we have a lot of Tom Brady haters out there. What do y'all think about that? Y'all think that the San Diego Chargers would really consider hiring Lincoln Riley as a head coach? The NFL's done stupider shit before than that. I mean, they did hire Cliff Clint Kingsbury to, to run a team. So, yeah, there's that. I think people are getting too hung up on these air raid offenses and these offenses. Now the defenses seem like they're starting to catch up a little bit. So if I'm a San Diego Charger fan, I don't want Lincoln Riley to be my head coach. I'd, I'd more consider Matt Campbell than I would Lincoln Riley. And Matt Campbell doesn't have a good, as good a record as Lincoln Riley, but that's only because Lincoln Riley was propped up by the Oklahoma Sooners, who he turned around and basically stabbed him back. It wasn't just a, a convenient, just – Nice little I'm going to another place kind of deal, but we've talked about that ad nauseum. <laughs> and now back to con time Deion Sanders. Now I know that you con time groupies out there are tired of hearing me grill the hell out of them, and y'all are so frustrated. Y'all just want to come through the screen and choke me about it. But I have to tell y'all the truth. I'm here to give y'all the truth, even if it if it's gonna hurt you, you know. It's just like your daddy used to tell you, you know. 
this is this gonna hurt you more than it's gonna hurt me. Even though, you know, we never really believed that. <laughs> but I just don't want y'all to continue to believe this big old lie and this con they call Deion Sanders. And as this rap song points out, and it says it more prophetically and, and, and so astutely that I just can't believe it was such a great song that this woman created. It says in the song, if you see me, you know it's about the book. Right out the gate, stinging his ass. No true words could have ever been spoken than that very first verse. Then she talks about how his son's crying because he's getting sacked all the time. Because the guy is a sack leader in a reverse, in a reverse awful kind of way in that he's getting his ass sacked quite, 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 quite a bit. And that's why I call him Sack of Zulu Sanders. I'm glad I'm not the only one that sees this. And that way people can stop saying that I'm a racist just because I call out someone that just happens to be a minority. It has nothing to do with that. He could be purple. He could be Barney's son. He could love you. You could love me. Everybody be one big happy family. If he's getting sacked all the time, I'm going to call him Sack of Zulu Sanders. I don't care if he's from the rings of Saturn. Then we have... He's 56, acting 30. Once again, she must be in my mind. Because like I said, this dude, he wants all this respect. He wants everybody to call him coach. And then he wants to add silly-ass connotations to it, like Coach Prime. <laughs> like I've said numerous times, sounds like a cartoon character, a bad cartoon character, off the Transformers or some shit. Then, I like the little clip she put in there about do you believe me now? Yeah, we believe you now. We believe you that you are a con. We believe what the outlaw posse has been saying all along, that you're a con man, and the con is up. It's not that big of a deal. Sometimes you get fooled up in life. In this case, a lot of people got fooled up in life. That's all I got to say about that. You guys and guys, tell me what you think about all this. Y'all like the rap song? What was your favorite part of the rap song? Drop it in the comment section and let me know. And now, for the comment of the day, comes from Eric Taco Marino. He says, I wish DG the best, and I could care less, speaking of Dylan Gable, and I could care less if we do play them in the playoffs. I have no hard feelings towards anyone that left, including Riley. I will not sink that low to hate anyone, brother. What it's done is done. We just need to keep focusing on where our program is going. And that is the comment of the day. Also, it's a little heart down here. If you want to make a one-time donation to the program and throw a few dollars in the coffers, just hit that heart or a few dollars in the coffers. And as I said earlier, you can also join the Outlaw Posse. It's not $2.99 a month, 75 cents a week. That's just a bottle of water. It's a little join button, a subscribe button. As I told you before, if you're on an Apple phone, you may have to go to your laptop or your computer in order to join like share comment and subscribe to this channel the big four that's always important and those are free and as always kmca to all the other teams class is now officially dismissed <laughs>